NASA's choice to award new liquid hydrogen contracts to both plug power and air products has revealed something deeper than two companies supplying aerospace-grade fuel. It has exposed a strategic divide inside the hydrogen industry, one that separates legacy industrial hydrogen suppliers from a new generation of green hydrogen producers who aim to decarbonize even the most demanding applications. This divide matters not just to NASA, but to policymakers, investors, and developers trying to understand where the hydrogen market is truly heading. And today, for the first time, these two worlds collide inside a single procurement cycle. On December 1, 2025, Plug Power delivered its first ever batches of liquid hydrogen to NASA, marking the company's debut in one of the highest specification hydrogen markets in the world. NASA requires exceptionally pure liquid hydrogen for propulsion testing, cryogenic research, and advanced aerospace programs. This type of hydrogen cannot fail. It cannot vary in quality. It cannot arrive late or contaminated. When NASA chose plug power for part of its supply, the selection sent a message that newer players, especially those focused on green hydrogen and distributed electrolyzer production, are now mature enough to operate in the elite domain long dominated by legacy industrial gas giants. But the contrast between plug power and air products is important. Air products, which received the overwhelming majority of NASA's 2025 Hydrogen Volume Award, is one of the oldest and largest hydrogen suppliers in the world. It built the infrastructure that fueled the space shuttle program, powered hydrogen research for decades, and supplied the Kennedy Space Center through multiple generations of NASA missions. Air Products is reliable, experienced, and capable of producing large amounts of hydrogen at scale. But not all of that hydrogen is green. Much of it is conventional hydrogen, produced from methane, steam methane reforming, or other fossil pathways. While Air Products has disclosed ambitious plans to build green hydrogen facilities globally, including its high-profile involvement in mega-projects like NEOM. It has also withdrawn from some green hydrogen initiatives in the United States, signaling the complexity and cost realities of scaling green hydrogen at industrial levels. This difference matters because the world is transitioning from fossil-based hydrogen to clean hydrogen produced using renewable electricity. As clean energy policies tighten and global emissions rules intensify, the type of hydrogen a supplier produces increasingly shapes their competitiveness, their positioning, and their pathway into future markets. NASA itself does not explicitly require green hydrogen in the most recent procurement cycle. The contract requests liquid hydrogen, not renewables-based liquid hydrogen. But the agency's long-term decarbonization commitments align closely with the broader federal push to reduce carbon footprints across all government operations. This means that future aerospace hydrogen demand may lean more heavily toward low-carbon sources, even for rocket and test applications. That makes Plug Power's strategic positioning unique. Plug Power, unlike air products, is building its U.S. hydrogen infrastructure around green hydrogen. Through regional electrolyzer plants, powered by clean or low-carbon electricity, the company intends to create a national network of distributed hydrogen production sites. This model is fundamentally different from the traditional centralized megaplant structure. Instead of generating massive volumes at a single site and transporting it through pipelines or long trucking routes, Plug Power's strategy mirrors the distributed design of data centers or telecom towers. Many smaller plants spread across key regions, connected through logistics and storage. This modular strategy offers flexibility, redundancy, faster expansion, and the ability to serve diverse customers without relying on a single point of failure. The NASA contract validates this approach. Even though Plug Power's award represents only about 1% to 2% of NASA's total hydrogen volume for the 2025 cycle, it demonstrates that a distributed green hydrogen network 
can meet the strictest performance requirements in the world. If plug power had relied on a single large electrolyzer or centralized production facility, it would be much harder to supply NASA's geographically dispersed research centers reliably. Instead, the company leverages multiple production sites, a dedicated cryogenic transport fleet, and a modular expansion strategy that allows hydrogen to be produced closer to where it is needed. This is precisely what NASA wants. Redundancy, reliability, purity, and consistency. Meanwhile, Air Products' infrastructure remains unmatched in scale and experience. It is understandable why NASA relies on them for more than 36 million pounds of hydrogen across multiple major space centers. But at the same time, Air Products' supply is not necessarily green hydrogen. Even though the company is investing in clean energy and claims major green hydrogen ambitions, its current supply chain includes conventional and blue hydrogen sources. This does not negate its capability. It simply puts it in a different category, a legacy supplier expanding into green hydrogen rather than a green hydrogen first producer entering NASA's orbit. This difference sets the stage for a future competition that could reshape the hydrogen landscape in aerospace and beyond. As the cost of green hydrogen falls, driven by cheaper electrolyzers, cheaper renewable electricity, and emerging incentives, NASA and other high-value customers may increasingly prefer low-carbon hydrogen. Clean hydrogen aligns with NASA's decarbonization strategy, federal sustainability directives, and future aerospace innovations, such as hydrogen-based propulsion, zero-carbon launch infrastructure, and renewable cryogenic technologies. When that shift occurs, the suppliers best positioned to win will be the ones with scalable distributed low-carbon hydrogen networks, not solely those with large traditional hydrogen plants. This opens the door for plug power. Their initial 218,000 kilogram supply contract acts as a real-world performance test. If they demonstrate reliability, quality, and delivery precision equal to or better than air products, their share could increase in future cycles. NASA's hydrogen procurement structure, which includes multi-year optional extensions, allows room for expansion if plug power proves itself. The agency has a history of gradually expanding supplier roles once trust is established. That is how legacy industrial gas players built dominance in the first place. For the hydrogen industry, this moment signals something important. The race is no longer simply about who can produce the most hydrogen. The race is now about who can produce the cleanest hydrogen, deliver it the most flexibly, and integrate it across the most diverse applications, including aerospace. Air Products has scale and legacy strength, but plug power has alignment with the energy transition and a modern, modular infrastructure suited for tomorrow's demands. Both matter. Both play different roles. But only one is structurally built around the green hydrogen future that policymakers, investors, and technology developers increasingly prioritize. And this is where the real opportunity emerges for developers, consultants, and investors studying green hydrogen strategy. NASA's contract reveals not just who supplies hydrogen today, but which hydrogen business models are gaining momentum for the future. Distributed green hydrogen networks fit mission-critical research centers. Modular electrolyzers align with intermittent renewable power. Green hydrogen supports federal decarbonization goals. Flexibility supports aerospace reliability. When these pieces fit together, the pathway points toward a market where green hydrogen does not merely compete, it wins. Plug Power's NASA contract may be small in volume, but it is massive in significance. It tells us that the green hydrogen era is stepping into new territory. It shows that distributed electrolyzer networks can meet world-class standards. It proves to the market that NASA, one of the most demanding hydrogen buyers on the planet, is willing to test, trust, and potentially expand greener alternatives. And it sends a message to the entire industry. 
The future of hydrogen supply will not be determined by historical dominance, but by who can align with the next generation of energy, aerospace, and environmental goals. For more tools, models, and insights on building green hydrogen projects, visit ETT Peace, uh -huh. Connect, Rene Energy, Com, uh -huh. and join the next generation of developers shaping the clean energy future.